The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618 the trader's edge now steve rhodes Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the March 14th, the magical, magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, we do not make that one little two by four shift. Well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. More important than that, though. Is that during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers. Then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on, Mon on uh, Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got uh, all the indices trading to the downside, with the exception being the Dow, which is up 78 points. 33.022 is its print. The SP is off 24, half a percent. NASDAQ is off 1 and 7 tenths, or 235 points. The Russell is off 1 and 7 tenths percent, 33 points. The Semi is 3 percent, 92 points. Trend is off 78. Gold's back 22.80. She's printed 1962. Silver's down 83 cents. That's a little over 3 percent. 2532 is her print. Lights we crude tri uh, printing out at 10219. That's off seven bucks. Natural gas off a dime, a little over two percent, four dollars and sixty one six. Four dollars and sixty one cents is what it is printing. And the thirty year treasury off two full points and eight ticks. She's printing out at one fifty two twenty six. Lead the charge dollar wise the upside. You got Biontech, BNTX is ticker symbol up seventeen bucks, thirteen percent. Dexcom is up fourteen bucks. EPAM Systems up 14, that's 7%. Moderna up 10% or 14. And BlackRock is up uh, just a little over, well, one and three quarters percent or 11 buckaroonies. To the downside is Google, 85 bucks, a little over 3%. Amazon, 85, 3%. Tesla's off 35, 4.4%. Aberdeen Standard is off 34 bucks or 13%. Palo Alto Network's off 5%, 27 buckaroonies. So let's begin with, where do we want to begin? I think where we should begin, let's just switch over here and as the first spot. So now you're looking at our four panel. You should be looking at the four panel, white background charts, daily time frame, ES mini in the upper left-hand corner, NQ in the upper right, Dow the lower left, Russell 2000 lower right. Now, if we take a look at the uh, one that makes the most, uh, what's what the most important chart I think for us to look at is going to be the NQ. And the reason is, well, first on a daily time frame. Each of these have bottoming patterns. In the ES Mini, it's a TD9 count and Rose Mintum indicator bottom. In the case of the NQ, it's a TD9 count and Rose Mintum indicator bottom. In the case of the Dow, it is, well, both the same, a TD9 count and a Rose Mintum indicator bottom. And for the Russell, it is just a Rose Mintum indicator bottom signal. So they all have bottoming patterns. The one that is being threatened right now is the NQ. First, price is trading below the Rose Mintum indicator signal. That would be would need a low or a close below, I should say, 13.10675 or 13.061. The TD9 count bottom that would negate really both those signals is 13.031. We're at 13.061 right now. So you want to watch that at day's end. So as price is moving, the reason why I think this is the most important chart for us to go look at is price is pulling back to a potential, po potential level of support that was established by that TD9 count. Typically, if we're going to see a bottom here, 
not always, but typically, we'll see some type of bottoming signals for the intraday time frame charts. So there is our next move. So the next move says, let's go take a look at those eight panel NQ charts out here. If you give me a moment, we'll get over there. That'll populate this screen or should populate this screen. Thought I had it out. There we go. So now we take a look at the NQ. Let's go see what we can see. Let's begin with our shortest time frame, which is a 30-minute time frame. That's your upper right-hand panel. I'll just simply expand out the chart. What we can see here is no bottom signal. Yeah, signal, yes, you had a Rosemont Dominicator signal that's been triggered, but no bullish reversal candle, not until we get that bullish reversal candle with that identify a bottom. We are in bar number four of a TD9 count, so we know that's not a bottom. There's no wave count bottom signal that we have out here. So this looks like, at least at this stage, at this very moment, 111 in the afternoon, that the NQ wants to head lower. Or what I should say is at least go target or at least go test the bottom of that daily swing point uh, level. But again, no bottom in place or signal in place for the 30-minute time frame chart. Same is true for 60. The 60-minute chart is in bar number 7. That's going to end at 2 p.m. It could be on bar 8, 9, or the bar following 9. So you could see a bottom signal in the 60-minute time frame chart between 2 and 4 this afternoon. We don't have any kind of bottom signal on the 120-minute. In fact, if anything, its message is bearish because price was able to bust through that breakout level of 13 to 25. A bar number 7 on the 240-minute chart... That 240-minute chart, let's see, this one's going to complete at 4 o'clock. So we're talking about not until this evening before that could generate some kind of a uh, bottoming pattern. And that would be 610, really bad, say, between 10 and 2 in the morning would be when that could take place. On the five-hour time frame chart, no bottom signal here. So as price is approaching that key swing point, and not that it can't hold um, because it's certainly pulling back, or I believe it's pulling back on lighter volume, but there are no corresponding bottoming signals that we would see in those intraday time frames and so this is a suggestion to you and I that it's going to take those levels out what happens if it take those takes those levels out well it's a great question, and I really wouldn't be able to answer that until Friday. But here's what it could mean. And the reason I say I couldn't answer that until Friday is because if we take out that low, again that low out here in the NQ is going to be 13025 Chris, this is the continuous contract. Is that uh, some you just want to make sure here? So give me a moment. Uh, 13031. Well, yeah, shoot. So we're going with 13031. All right, so that's the first key out here. That's the key low for us to take a look at. A close below that would, in essence, a close. Not trading below it. This is why I say till Friday. But a close below it on Friday would negate the TD9 count bottom. And that would then say, and we're also below a breakout level of 13,462. And so if we do get that on Friday, it's only Monday. I don't know whether we will or we won't. Right now, that level is being pressured. But if we did, that would give us a signal that price should then move back to its next breakout level. And that's at the 10,942 area. So, you know, we'll get a signal today. That signal would be a, really, you'd get a, the close below the uh, TD9 count. Let me just expand out the daily time frame chart. Should be enough of a signal to say, okay, you're headed lower. But the question is, by week's end, you can still hold that weekly TD9 count bottom out there. And that's why I hesitate a bit. But this would be the first real signals that close below that. Now, where do we want to go to next out here? There's nothing else that's really threatening. When I take one, nothing else with regard to the equity futures contracts that are threatening that February 24th low. Yeah, the semiconductor index, I believe, is trading below it as we speak right now. But we get back to this break. Let's go take a look at a couple of questions that have come in. We don't want to get behind on that. Uh, looks like we've got one from Tim, wants to look at Amazon, Kamiko, CCJ for Casey. That's all we've got so far. Look right now. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educate investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 71, S&P's up 22, NASDAQ 100 down 225. And we're going to go to the ones, one of those NASDAQ 100 stocks to uh, start out the uh, second segment here. This one is a request from Tim M. Tim writes in and says, hope you had a great weekend. I did. Hope you did as well. Uh, please look at Amazon. A-M-Z-N is a ticker symbol. Looking for the support resistance levels on the daily and weekly. Anything that catches your attention. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, what catches my attention when we take a look at Amazon, there's a couple of different things, Tim. First, uh, we were talking about the uh, NQ and its TD9 count on a weekly basis, that pattern out here. Well, if we take a look at Amazon, it has the same thing. So this is January 28th. That formed that TD9 count bottom. Last week, that level was tested. Now, on a weekly basis, I, I'm going to do this off screen here. If you give me a moment, let me get to my three panel charts. I'm just curious what the volume on Amazon was last week. So last week's volume was, as it was pushing lower, 23 million shares was going against 24 million shares. So it's pushing lower with basically the same type of volume out there. Okay. But still that bottom held, and it's still a significant uh, bottom at TD9 count. Now, if that level fails... By fail, I mean a close below that area. That area, again, is going to be 2707.04. Then, Tim, the intermediate time frame, the weekly time frame, would be signaling to move back to its next breakout level or its breakout level, the first breakout level, which is 2330. So a close below that TD9 count bottom is going to suggest, and this is on Friday, a move to 2330. So that's the first thing that catches my eye. The bottom is still valid. The daily time frame has a road's momentum indicator bottom. That there resulted from a gap to the upside, which is in essence being tested right now. So we'll go down and check out that volume. So that volume metrics, matrix, 
Uh, we saw a gap up on March 10th with 6.7 million. You're pulling back right now with 2.2. So it is pulling back with lighter volume. Prices below that red oscillator and change line, Tim. And if it closes below 28.58 today, at a minimum, we can say that gap would get tested. When I say the gap would get tested, I'm referring to the price point of um, really, I'd say probably 28.05. But the question is, is what is price doing as it gets down to the price level of 28.13? And that is a swing point from March 8th. And that swing point had 4.5 million shares. We're 2.2 right now. So it is pushing down with similar type volume, not light volume. Of course, we'll have a better uh, we'll have a well better information at day's end versus right now. But it does look like this wants to continue to push lower. Unless price can close above that red oscillator and change line today of 28.58 or thereabouts. But overall from Amazon, you wanted support. Well, I really gave you support, which is going to be the low of the pattern. And the low of the pattern here, the road's momentum indicator signal, I'd say that low is going to be at uh, 26.71.45 because that's where the low is at. Now, that's on the daily time frame. Resistance is something you also asked for. Well, right now with price below the red oscillator and change line, that would be resistance. The next level of resistance would be 30.72, the bottom of its daily profile. Is there anything else out here in Amazon that sticks out to us? Well, the 30-minute time frame chart says that we are now in the bar following bar number nine as we come into this gap. So... If it's going to find support, it should do it within the next nine minutes. So what's important here to watch, Tim, with regard from an intraday standpoint, is going to be the low. It looks like that low is going to be 28.16.55. Unless in the nine, next nine minutes, eight minutes, price pushes below that. But right now, and it could, but right now that's the level to be watching. If you see a 30-minute bar that closed below 28.16.55, that suggests lower price. Now, you'd say lower price to where, and I would say 27.62.43. To be exact, that's its breakout level. You close below that on a 30 minute basis and then it says lower price but right now what amazon is signaling to you is on a short-term basis that's the 30 minute time frame you could see a bottom form and you could see price actually move up to 28.98 but the cool thing about that pattern is you mark that low you and i've already done that you see price close below that that tells you we're not going north instead what amazon is doing is going south there is no other piece of signal information well, hold on let me one one more second here well, the 15 minute chart also has a TD9 count bottom. So that, in essence, in effect, this says that price should bounce up to about the 28.58 level. Now, it's really ultra short term, but that should be on a 15 minute basis. That should be a counter trend resistance level out there. So, Tim, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Amazon. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's go to our next question. This one is coming in from Casey. Let me get this uh, started here. It'll take just a few moments for this to all populate these time frames. And Casey's question goes like this. Currently hold the position around 24.50. Price to trade right now, folks, at 25.36, okay? Would you please run your charts and share your thoughts on support resistance daily, weekly? And uh, you may have other requests. GDX, I'm looking at uh, to exit around 45, more pain before that. Okay, so let's take a look at two. This is from Denver, Colorado. Craig from Denver. So as we take a look at CCJ, you're in a 2450. What CCJ is doing right now, it's testing its daily oscillator and change line. I'm just simply going to expand out the chart here. So because it's green, pulling back and testing that level is nothing more than a normal retracement to support. That normal retracement to support is at the price level of 25.29. Now, that could change by a, a penny or two. So, you know, use that as your general area. If you did see a close below that, then this signal would be that a further retracement could or should unfold, Casey. Well, really not Casey, Craig. And that would take price back to the 2402 or 2185. But right now, price is holding support. I would not jettison the position because price is holding support. Do I see a topping pattern? Well, the answer is yes, both you and I do. And that's the A to B equals CD pattern. The A pattern started down here at the low of January 28th, running up to the side of the shooting star on uh, February 10th, moving back down to this uh, piercing candle on February 22nd, and then making more than a one-to-one -one move out here. And it is today's gap down that is confirming that signal. So you want to really, really, really want to watch that green oscillator and change line. If price holds that, well, support is held. That's what it's telling you at that stage. On a uh, monthly basis, Kamiko has a TD9 count top, so that is still in place out here. The weekly has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, but in that case, or in both cases, price are above their green oscillator and change lines and the top of their profiles. So, Craig, that says that those signals are neutral, and the... Uh 
I don't see anything else here to really help you out with regard to CCJ. So let's go ahead and move on to the GDX out there. I do hope that that information helps you. So in the case of the GDX, which is pulling back, your question is you're long, you're looking to exit around 45 bucks. So 45 bucks, I assume, is going to take us higher, and yet it's uh, pulling back. So uh, why has that not done? Oh, it's just loading all that information. So. The question becomes, what's the GDX doing? So let's get this thing to populate here. Okay, so now what we can see, first thing that we can see is that price is below, and that back to the daily time frame. Although I don't have a topping signal here, because I don't, because we don't, not least ones that Stevie uses, um, that looks pretty cool, except that price right now is back below that green oscillator and change lens. Gap below it this morning at the open. So your next level of support here, and you're asking where's the more pain at? Well, the first level of more pain is going to be at 36.56. That's the bottom of that daily profile. If price were to close below that, then you're looking at a move back to the 34.10 level out here. So because price is with inside its daily profile, Right now, we've got a consolidation going on between that because the bottom is held. That was from the trading day of March 9th. And the top is held. That was from the trading day of March 10th. Yes, there's a TD nine count pattern, but that high formed on bar number seven. So it really doesn't qualify as a top, so to speak. But yes, you could easily see price move back to 36.56. And again, below that would be 34.10. That's coming from the daily time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll finish taking a look at the GDX and then we'll move on to our next request. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 53. S&P's off 26. Uh, NASDAQ 100 down 246. Back to the uh, GDX just to finish this out. The other thing that sticks out to me. So if there is a close below the bottom of its daily profile, and again, that level's at 36... 36.56. I had mentioned 34.10, which is the TD nine count breakout level. You can see that. That's the uh, second chart from the upper right uh, on the uh, right hand side. Uh, the other area we notice that the oscillator and change line changed colors a couple weeks back, and when that changes colors, we typically see price net line catch up to each other. More often than not, it's when we get a topping pattern that's in play. And I don't have a topping pattern in place here on the weekly time frame chart. But you close below the bottom of that profile, 3410 is going to bring us into that 3380 level. So that really becomes your range of a move to the downside if the bottom of that profile gets taken out. So that's the last piece of information that I've got out here. The 130-minute time frame chart did top with a uh, TD9 count pattern. It's trading into support, and that's at the 3660 level. So close below that, below that would say 3535 35, if we're really going to get granular. On the 30-minute uh, chart out here, I, I said I was done, but apparently I lied. Uh, the 30-minute chart has a TD9 count bottom. So this will be helpful to anyone tracking the GDX. And that says uh, pay attention to the low this half hour. So we just started that new bar. I don't know what that low is going to be. But whatever the low is of this half hour, that should hold the support. And you should see a rally. The rally would take you up to 37.32, the oscillator and change line. If it doesn't act as support, that's going to be your signal that price is going to head lower. Certainly test the bottom of that daily profile, but perhaps lower than that. So that's what the 30-minute chart is assisting us. So I do hope that helps you out, that thorough review of the GDX. Let's go on to our next question. Next question here coming in from uh, Denny. Uh, Denny C. Uh, should I get out of FBND? I don't know. Let's get the FB, FBND out on the uh, screen out here. And I have no idea what that is, but I'm going to find out on my other screen, FBND. And I will fully read the question. That is uh, Fidelity Merrimack Street Trust trading out at 49.82. Well, we take a look at the uh, charts. We can see this thing has been falling like a knife. So should I get out of F? BND bond fund have been in it for diversification in my long-term IRA. Thanks, Dennis. Okay, let me share with you what the charts are communicating to us, and then you make that decision. We're going to start with the long-term chart. That's the monthly chart, and it's that TD9 count top. So I'm going to open this up here. I'm actually going to see if I can add more data uh, to this series. See if there is more data. It's probably only got 5,400 bars there. Yeah, I hate to expand it too much. just keeps increasing the uh, time frame. But let me just pull this back just a tad, see if there's anything here. And it looks like the answer to that is no. Okay, so that being said, here's what we know. You've got a TD9 count top. That formed out here in August of 2020. You are in bar number six right now. You're below the bottom of its monthly profile. And what this suggests to you and I, Dennis, is that price wants to target 4508. You're at 49.82 as we speak. That's what the monthly chart is communicating. The weekly chart is communicating that price wants to move lower as well. Why do we say that? Well, there was a TD9 count bottom that formed here February 25th. That did what it's supposed to do, which is take price up to the first level of resistance. In this case here, it was that red oscillator and change line. It tested and rejected that. And last week, you closed below that TD9 count bottom. This says it wants lower price. Now, lower price could take us all the way back to lows of March of 2020 in the $45 area. But what I can share with you, it's never a good thing to trade below a red oscillator and change line. And it's really never a good thing to close below a valid bottoming signal such as the TD9 count, that just simply suggests lower price. So that's the weekly chart. How about the daily chart? The daily chart says, here's the deal. The deal is you've got wave number seven, that's letter G. You could see a bounce here. You have to have a higher low. So we don't know whether that will take place tomorrow or not. You could have lower lows and that just extends the pattern. You can also see you're in bar number seven. So you could be getting close to a bottom between tomorrow and Thursday. And that would be the TD9 count. We can also see a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal has been triggered. That requires a bullish reversal candle. But as we speak right now, no bottoming signal really in place. There's the potential of those bottoming signals, but nothing that has been confirmed. And so that suggests lower price. But if I were to give you from a chart perspective, when you could see a bottom, I'd have to say it would be between 
Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday when that TD9 count pattern would come in. And then you'd just be looking for a bounce up that red oscillator and change line. Now, that's currently printed at 5033. That number is going to change by tomorrow, by Wednesday, and by Thursday out there. But with regard to the question, you know, do you jettison this position? This has broken through key areas of support out here. I'd really have to go in to figure out what is uh, with inside those holdings. That's what you should do. I don't know what the duration is. I don't know if these are corporate bonds. It's just a bond fund. So I don't really know what's inside there. And you'd really want to take a closer look at that to do a more thorough and more accurate uh, study of this. But uh, yeah, the monthly, the weekly, the daily time frame charts, the 195 minute chart suggests lower price. The 130 minute chart says you could get a TD9 count uh, bounce today. The same thing from the 30 minute chart, same thing from the 50 minute chart. But bigger picture, uh, uh, it does not look uh, really great for you, Dennis. So I hope that that helps you out. And um, you know, with regard to the idea of uh, taking your long-term portfolio and having some type of mix of bonds there, knowing that interest rates are likely going to rise uh, may not be the best place to uh, park your assets. And then I'd throw one other thing out there. This is just fundamental. But this is, you know, for every action, there's an equal or greater reaction. And I would ask you this question here. Uh, with, again, I don't know what, what's inside your holdings, but the question I would ask is this. Do you know the countries that have largest holdings of U.S. Treasury debt? And the answer is you probably do. And you'd probably write, oh, of course, Stevie, that is Japan number one and China number two. What is it, like 1.3 trillion or something along those lines? But Japan is number one, I believe, uh, Duffy. But, uh, you know, China is, uh, you know, 300 billion behind or something like that. Now, what we know here is the actions taken by this administration were to, uh, you know, go uh, uh, collect assets of uh, people that they don't like oligarchs, whatever you want to call them out there. That sends a signal that if you're on the wrong side of the U.S. out there, that they're going to go ahead and confiscate your property. Now, if you're a holder of debt and you're in China, what are you thinking out there, especially knowing that they've got the whole Taiwan thing possibly coming to a neighborhood soon out there? So what do you think they're going to do with their treasuries if that's the action they're going to take? They're going to be selling into these rallies out there. So while the markets might move higher with regard to uh, treasuries because of the chaos over in Europe, uh, chances are that China is going to be the one selling into them. So I don't know if I would have too much of your portfolio, but you've got to do what you've got to do. But just fundamentally, think about the shift that has taken place out there. If you are responsible for China's sovereign debt out there, and you know that uh, there's likelihood of some type of confrontation coming with regard to Taiwan, and you're holding all this U.S. dollars, so to speak, aren't you going to go ahead and find a way to get out of them? So everybody should always take that into consideration. For every action, there's a equal or greater reaction. In this case here, it's likely to be a greater reaction. So I hope that helps you all. Right now, we've got all the indices trading to the downside. The Dow's off 33. The S&P's down 35. NASDAQ 100, 267. The Russell's off 41 points. The semi's off 3, three and 3 tenths percent out there. And we come back. Let's go take a look at another question. This is from Nicholas and wants to take a look at the semiconductors that I believe are trading below their swing. Steve Roach with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
the technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to Philly and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? How was your weekend? Steve, it, uh, well, up here in the frozen tundra, it was truly frozen. It was uh, outrageously Oops. cold on Saturday. So uh, things are looking up, though. So good. in spite of that, my weekend was good. How was yours? Perfect. Perfect. Uh, it was a great, uh, you know, we had a cold front that went through here. I was playing in a, a golf tournament and uh, the winds were about 40 miles per hour uh, coming from the, uh, well, coming from every direction. And uh, literally in a two minute time period, we went from 85 degrees to like 65 degrees. I'm not, I'm not kidding. That, that is yeah. impressive. It, not when you're not prepared. We, we were prepared for the wind. We weren't prepared for that cold front like that to shift. But in any event, uh, but otherwise, weekend was uh, great. Yesterday was uh, perfect. And uh, But you want to take a look at the NQ, I believe, is what you called them out? Uh, yeah, which the we're NDX and the, uh, the June futures uh, okay. uh, that uh, right along with that. Steve, um, since your uh, uh, software systems throw up a uh, plethora of data to look at quickly. Uh, now that the, the NQ futures and the NDX cash index have just undercut, literally just in the past 10 minutes, those February 24th lows. Yes. Uh, and, and since we know prior swing points oftentimes act as support or resistance, at least we're prepared to look for that. Absolutely. And also on that NDX, the cash index daily charts, I observe this push to uh, a low under February 24th, not, not dramatically yet, but yes. underneath nonetheless. That then uh, uh, makes the count, the Chapman wave count, a leg G lower. And uh, since Saratoga Bob, one of Basil Chapman's customer, uh, customers, students from way back when, yep. alerted us to the uh, utility of the, uh, the trough G, peak G, sell and buy signals. Uh, I'm wondering anything uh, as you look at your charts on the shorter term charts, and I'm thinking would be the 30 minute two-hour or five-hour charts indicating bottoming potential, please. 
So the answer to your question is no. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and throw those charts up on the screen. The reason why I answered it so quickly is because we went through that uh, just a tad earlier. And typically, you're right. When we see price hitting a level of support that we would anticipate may hold, what we like to see is some type of bottoming signals on those intraday time frame charts. The 30-minute chart, your upper right-hand corner, you're in bar number five as we speak right now. So you could see a TD9 count uh, take place. You need uh, another hour and a half, two hours out there for that to take place. Uh, the 60-minute chart, this bar ends at 2 p.m. It's bar number seven. So you could get a bottom signal between two and four. And, and uh, the four-hour time frame chart is bottom, is, is in bar number seven. But that doesn't complete till four o'clock. So we don't have the type of bottoming signals that we would expect. Doesn't mean, John, that that can't hold. It's just that we would typically look for isn't present at the uh, moment. Um, what else can I provide you with? No, that is um, that is, that answers the question succinctly and quickly. That's the best way. Terrific. Perfect. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Sounds great. Stay warm up there, and uh, thanks for calling as always. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. I hope. Ship some Gulf of Mexico temperatures up my way, would you please? You got it. You got it. Happy to do that. It was John in uh, Philly. Uh, so now let's go uh, back and uh, let's take a look at the SMHs. If you give me a moment here, let me uh, change the screens. I believe I'm still on the white background screen, so that's good. And all we're going to do here is get back to the uh, charts that show us uh, the uh, multiple time frames for the SMHs out here. Let's read Nicholas question. Nick uh, writes and he says, I hope you had a great uh, 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 time off. I did. Uh, would you mind going over the SMHs uh, under the March 8th low seems wants to go further down? Where do you see the next support level? Uh, so we take a look at the SMHs out here. What are we going to look at first? Let's uh, let's focus in on the daily time frame and on the daily time frame. We've got no bottom signal whatsoever. Uh, I, I take that back. It's triggered a road's momentum indicator signal, but you need a bullish reversal candle to confirm that bottom. So I don't see anything there. The question would be where is price headed to next? Now, I think I only have the, the three breakout levels. So if you give me a moment here, we can just add in on this chart here. I'll just put, uh, give me all the breakout levels. So I'll give you the next breakout area for the SMHs for the daily time frame, And now we can say that figures at 223.94. Yeah, sorry for that silence there, but 223.94 would be your next price target area, short of some type of bullish reversal candle uh, forming and then confirming a road's momentum indicator bottom. Now let's go to the weekly time frame chart. We're below the bottom of its profile, bullish in structure, closed below it last week, closed below it the week before. That meets our two bar requirement. You've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, I can't really draw in accurately the A to B equals CD pattern, but I can give you a kind of a price projection. So this tops of the road's momentum indicator signal. I'm just going to move the A to B point now to the C to D point, And then that's just going to give us a price projection area. And that's around the 219. And the 219 level would be your one-to-one. -one. But we don't know if it's going to only be a one-to-one -one price projection on that A to B equals CD pattern. But that gives you your next price projection area. Your breakout level on the uh, weekly time frame is 170.46 out there. So that is not out of the question. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, the SMHs are pulling back into support. And here's the key support level. And that's the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile and that level is 234.31 so that's really a key level that you need to see hold of course it's a monthly chart it's only the 14th out here but nonetheless if price begins trading below that what it does is it increases the odds nick that uh, price is going to go and tag the 216 to 14 area so i would say 216 for, well for 234.31 and then 216.14 are your likely price target levels out here now as we look at intraday type charts out here on the intraday level the 65 minute chart is in bar number nine this completes at uh well completes in one minute 13.50 is the uh, time frame out there so um so this is going to complete, and that says you could have a TD nine count bottom in the next hour and a half or so, because that low can form on bar, the bar. Oh, I take that back. In the next 65 minutes, you're in bar number nine. So if this is going to form a bottom, you want to follow the low, the lowest low, whether it's this bar or the one that takes place another hour and five minutes from now. So that basically takes us to about three o'clock out there, and if. Uh, 
So that could be your bottoming signal. Nothing on 130. Now, when I say bottoming signal, I'm really just referring to like some type of counter trend move. I'm not referring to it as bottom, bottom, bottom. That's not what I'm saying. And I don't see any other signals really on the other intraday time frame. So I don't know that the 65 minute chart is going to hold. But you're trading below key levels of support really across the board, the exception being the monthly time frame, and you've got those parameters. So Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in and we'll look forward to your next request. So we get back from this break, folks. So we've been through all the questions that have come in by email. So that's a beautiful thing. We'll just do a review of, I suppose, what to be looking for for the rest of the trading day. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So what I thought we would do here is actually with this uh, with this uh, two minutes here is just to really follow along the theme of the NASDAQ 100. Since price is testing those levels of support, you know, we didn't see the bottom signals on the intraday time frame. Uh, if we take a look at the instruments that make up or some of the instruments that make up the uh, largest of the weightings here, we can see that Apple is trading below uh, both its uh, February 24th swing point out there. Now that had volume of 141 million shares. You only got 65 million today, but nonetheless, you're trading below that swing point. 
We had the swing point from January 24th that had under 62 million shares. So you continue to trade lower, but you're trading below support. Now, you're trading below support from a daily standpoint, but you're trading into support on a weekly time frame. And that's really the level that I want to be able to share with you, which is 150.94. We've tested that area, but that's a key level that needs to hold. Now, what happens if price closes below that? Well, there is a rising trend line. You can uh, type this in on your screen there. That would be the next area of support. And if that level failed, then we'd likely see a move back to 140.48. That's the bottom of its uh, monthly profile out there. Now, I can here during the next, we've got about a minute left. That's about it. Let's change over to a, a screen that looks at, oh boy, uh, this. So now you should see, I hope you see it. Uh, you've got uh, Apple in the upper left. We've really covered that. Microsoft still has its Rogemintum indicator and TD9 count bottom. Price is below the bottom of its profiles out here, so it may go back and test those lows, would seem likely. Amazon, uh, we talked about Amazon earlier, so we're not going to take a look at that. Facebook is trading below the bottom of its profile without any kind of bottom pattern in place. That looks like it wants to move lower. Tesla's trading into its swing point from February 24th and into support. That's the bottom of the current profile. And a close below the bottom of that profile, which is 760.793, would suggest lower price. NVIDIA, uh, it does have a bottom signal, but it's trading into that swing point. I don't know if it's with volume or not, but if price did close below the low of 206.50. That pattern would be negated. So we're not even seeing the signals here on the top eight instruments that make up about 50% of the weight in the NDX 100 to suggest that actually a bottom is in inside the NQ. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us home. I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a marvelous Monday, folks.